How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, this is a picture of Terrell Thomas. And this is a picture of him and his son in happier times. And you can see in the background, um, this is clearly a prison cell and this is where his life ended. Now, what I did, my royal family, because this is a bit of a long video, just to refresh the royal family's memory, I went um, and dug up some old videos to give a bigger picture of what is going on, the parties that are involved in this man's death, and the attitude of um, ex-sheriff um, David Clark because when all of this went down it happened under his watch. So what we have here family of black men who died after being deprived of water at Sheriff Clark's jail reach um, 6.75 um, million settlement. All right um, I do have a, a article that I am going to read bits and pieces of it, but we got to get there first. I will um, put the link to this article here. So let's begin this journey. Now this video um, that I'm getting ready to play, the date here is April 29, 2017. And it says, Sheriff David A. Clark Jr. refused to speak about dehydration. Um, death angers Milwaukee leaders. Okay, let's roll with it. Carpenter, and uh, Jacob, you've been covering an unusual court proceeding this week. What is going on? It's an inquest into the death of Terrell Thomas, who is an inmate at the Milwaukee County Jail in April 2016. It ended up coming out that he died of dehydration, which is an incredibly rare thing to happen. And so now prosecutors have asked a jury to listen to testimony and decide whether there's probable cause to criminally charge anybody in connection with his death. And that's something that they do before prosecutors decide whether they actually want to file charges. The jury's verdict on whether there's probable cause is strictly advisory. And how long was he in the jail before this happened, and is there tape of what happened so we can see who was directly involved in this? Sure. He was taken into jail, and within a day, uh, he was put in a solitary confinement cell. Uh, he was deprived of water because somebody had turned off his water after he flooded a previous cell. And nobody ever marked this down. Nobody ever told other officers, other uh, lieutenants that his water had been turned off essentially they forgot and so for seven days he went without water and according to prosecutors he was just mentally unable to communicate his needs because he suffered from bipolar disorder and has anybody been fired or lost their jobs over this not that we're aware of at this point um, it is something that we're taking a look at we do know that nobody was immediately fired right after according to the records that we've reviewed there have been some policy changes that have been discussed at the inquest, but no outright firings that we're aware of at this point. And normally Sheriff David A. Clark Jr., our Milwaukee County Sheriff, is quite outspoken on any number of issues. What has he said about all of this? He's been completely silent so far about the circumstances surrounding the death. About all that he's really said are that, is that the media has underreported uh, the crimes that led to Thomas's incarceration and his poor physical health. He did suffer from diabetes and, and some things related to hypertension, but none of that has been determined to have anything to do with his death. And what what was he arrested for? I know it wasn't murder or manslaughter or anything. Was he, it? he was arrested for shooting a man. Uh, the man survived and then traveling from there to the Potawatomi Casino and firing several rounds uh, in the casino, not hitting anybody. Uh, his family has said that because of his bipolar disorder, because he wasn't taking his medication, that he was essentially in the throes of a, a mental breakdown. And that's reflected as well by the fact that once he got to jail, he was shouting, he was singing, uh, he was having delusions, 
and because of that and because of the actions that he took of flooding his cell, he was put into that solitary confinement wing uh, where he was never taken out for seven straight days. He was supposed to get at least one hour per day out of his cell. And uh, what have other inmates told us about all of this? Other inmates have said that they made guards aware of this, that there's one inmate who we spoke with um, early on in this investigation who actually refused to testify at the inquest, but he has said that he went to guards and said, you need to get this man help, and if you don't, his death is on your hands. And they did show video that, that looks to show uh, that he did go to Terrell Thomas's cell, he looked in, and he went to a guard station. We don't know what was said there, but Mr. Barry, the inmate, has said that he went to the guard station and told uh, the officers, you need to get this man help. Well, thank you. We know you've had a really busy week, so thanks. So, okay. So as we proceed on my royal family, now I have another video. Now, this video is dated February 12, 2018. Three Milwaukee um, County um, jail staff members charged in dehydration death of inmate Terrell Thomas. Now at noon, breaking news. Three Milwaukee County jail staffers now charged in the connection with the death of an inmate who died of dehydration. Terrell Thomas died at the jail almost two years ago, and now three officers in the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office are about to go through court, accused of an assortment of crimes. Our Charles Benson is reading over the criminal complaints against the three. He is in our newsroom. Charles, what do we know? Yeah, a bit of a speed reading class here. The medical examiner ruled that Terrell Thomas died of dehydration and that his death was a homicide. He went seven days without water after it was shut off to his cell. He died in April of 2016. An inquest jury determined there was probable cause to charge seven jail employees. And today we're learning about charges for three. Here they are. Nancy Evans was charged with obstructing an officer, which is a felony. She was the commander of the Milwaukee County Jail. She is also charged with misconduct in office, which is a misdemeanor. James Ramsey Guy is charged with neglect of resident of a penal facility. He is a corrections officer within the sheriff's office. The other person charged is Kashka Met Meters, Meters. She is a lieutenant within the sheriff's office and according to the criminal complaint was working in the jail during the time period of Thomas's death. Now all three people charged so far expected to make court appearances today. Our Ricky Mitchell has been following this story and covered the inquest. She will have much more starting on live at four. Maybe. And Charles, you mentioned the others were also under investigation at this point. Do we know, have they been cleared or could there be more charges still filed? So when and determined that from the DA's office, we know that these uh, three charges came down today. There are court appearances. We also know a lawsuit has been filed in this particular particular incident that did name Sheriff Clark as one of the people involved in that situation. So there's still a lot more to unfold and unpack as this case moves forward. Benny? And we'll have more of those updates on live at all right, so, like I said, I needed to go back in order to give a fuller picture and to see the parties that are involved. So, um, now I'm in the present, and Milwaukee pays nearly $7 million, okay? It pays nearly $7 million to settle jail death lawsuit. Now, I'm going to pick through this. They said Milwaukee County paid nearly $7 million to settle a lawsuit from the, um, the family of a man whose dehydration death in jail was described by his attorneys as tor torture. Um, attorneys for 38-year-old Terrell Thomas called the settlement one of the largest ever in Wisconsin for a jail death. Tuesday was the first time they publicly announced the settlement but it was finalized in March. The lawsuit was dismissed earlier this month. So, um, the size of the settlement, I believe, reflects the tremendous pain and suffering that uh, Mr. Thomas endured for days, said James N., a Milwaukee attorney who represents Thomas' family. Now, as I pick through this, um, 
part of this settlement, um, it wasn't split. What I can remember, because I was researching so much, the um, the county had to pay the the large portion of it, and then um, Armor Cor um, uh, Correctional Health Service services they had to pay I think a little over a million um, for it too for the neglect um, and oh this is what I wanted to point out they said at the jail Thomas had um, had water to his cell shut off as punishment because he had flooded his previous cell by um, stuffing a mattress in the toilet the water was never um, turned back on and he died a week later he lost 34 pounds or 10 percent of his body weight during the week he was deprived of water um, according to the lawsuit and the other part they saying that the settle the settlement money will be split amongst uh, um, Thomas six children including four uh, minors uh, let me see what did they say Milwaukee prosecutor uh, filed criminal charges against three jail staffers who was involved in um, shutting off Tom Thomas Water or who lied to police during the subsequent investigation. So we are um, up to speed on it and I have one more audio. I have an audio to play um, and this audio video here is um, April 28th, 2017, and you'll fully understand why I'm playing it, um, and then I'm going to close this out. Hey, that facility downtown. Oops. Testimony in the inquest is expected you next week. Wait a minute. Let me refresh this. Let me refresh this all the way. Made a mistake on my end. Let's see if we got it right for the death of an inmate last year. The county's district attorney is holding a legal proceeding before a jury to see if criminal charges are warranted. It's the first probe of the jail in two decades, although it's not the only death under questionable circumstances. As Annalise Hensel of member station WUWM reports, the probe could affect the fate of Milwaukee County's outspoken conservative sheriff, David Clark. All this week, eight jurors have been hearing excruciating details about the last days of Terrell Thomas. Thomas, who the medical examiner says suffered from bipolar disorder, was arrested on a gun charge about a year ago. He was held in the Milwaukee County Jail, where officials say he started causing problems. Lieutenant Koshka Metters testified about what she saw when responding to reports that Thomas had flooded his cell. He had the rip mat, part of the rip mattress, and he was pushing that down in the toilet as well flooding it, uh, making the water come out into out from under a cell into the day room area. Metters ordered Thomas's water shut off. She says just until his behavior improved, but no one ever turned it back on. Witnesses say Thomas appeared to be in mental health distress and might not have been capable of telling the guards he needed water. He died in his cell a week later of dehydration. Pete Knezny is with Milwaukee's Legal Aid Society and has been attending the inquest all week. It is disturbing how many people would have had an opportunity to notice what was going on and for whatever reason weren't paying attention. His group is concerned not just about Thomas's death, but also three others at the jail over a six-month period, including a newborn. Knezny says it appears jail staff ignored the mother's calls for help and didn't check on her for hours. Certainly hard to understand how someone could go into labor and have a baby without anybody noticing. Although there are mounting concerns about the deaths at the jail, and all four families have filed civil lawsuits, this week's inquest only involves the case of Terrell Thomas, who died of dehydration. Stan Stojkovic teaches criminal justice at UW-Milwaukee and says while the inquest is a rarely used tool, it could have far-reaching implications. They're going through an investigative process to determine was there any criminal wrongdoing, but then again, there may be some other implications for civil wrongdoing and civil liability down the road. Stojkovic says jail staffers could face criminal charges, although the official who oversees the jail, Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark, is unlikely to be charged. 
Clark, who campaigned for Donald Trump, has built a reputation as a tough-talking lawman. On local conservative radio station WISN earlier this month, he appeared to blame the victims, saying a few of the inmates who died reportedly had a history of drug use. I cannot control someone who comes in in bad medical health that is a heroin user or has all of these other ailments and they happen to die inside that facility downtown. Testimony in the inquest is expected to continue next week. Then the jurors will decide whether to recommend that the district attorney pursue criminal charges in the death of Terrell Thomas. For NPR News. So the reason why I played that because um, in the first video that I put, they said um, Clark, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't say anything about this. And what I want to say is no one should have to die for flooding a bathroom. I mean, flooding their cell. They shouldn't have to die of that. You have to assess each inmate. And we've been getting, um, been, many of us YouTubers have been search, researching that a lot of um, people that have mental health issues and they have to, ha and they are dealing with law enforcement on any form in the, on the street or in the jail, they act like they don't know what to do. That's what they do. They act like they don't even have enough sense because they always want to fall back on training that, um, um, you know, they just, they, they robots and stuff. You know, it's like they lack common sense and stuff. This man was clearly, ha he was having a, a episode. I guess that's the correct word to use because this family said he is bipolar and stuff because he had shot at a man, he had shot in a casino. And then in the first video, they even, he even described how this man was acting when they took him to jail. You know, he was the... He had the, a range of emotions. And then this is under this motherfucker Coon's watch. And he says this type of stuff. This lack any empathy. You have a duty and responsibility, even if they have co committed a crime or whatever it may be. You're still supposed to treat the person with some type of dignity. And they should have had enough to know that this man is dealing with a lot of mental health issues and I'm pretty sure that he's probably been in jail before and he has had these episodes before too as well and you see who got locked up and everything so this is what's gonna happen to you because you ain't the sheriff no more ex-sheriff David Clark the momentum is piling up on you since the enemy and, and I blame the enemy for this more so than him. You took joy in watching this motherfucking coon degrade his people. But what he did was he left a trail of shit. Now y'all are paying a lot of money. This ain't the only lawsuit. There is a ton of shit. If anybody is new to the true royal family, I have a playlist. I make more videos about the sheriff than anybody on YouTube. I would, I would strongly suggest check out my playlist. It's a whole history. You got to start from the beginning, whatever that date was, I think 2016 or 17, when I started on him. And everything that I have predicted is going to happen to him because they are even now protesting any speaking engagements that he go to because that's how he make his coins now on these speaking engagements and remember a baby died in that jail remember um one of his guards um repeatedly raped a woman that's one of them that they kept real hush hush but you see how quickly shit goes downhill see this is even if he is not physically there he is a reflection of leadership. So he going to pay some kind of way. And the way the enemy get down, they don't give a damn about us or anything like that. They don't already like coons that, that are, because that, they look at them as traitors to their own people. So they're going to naturally do what they're going to do, degrade him. 
but he is so fucking deranged he don't even know that he is being degraded that's how he gets down so there will be more to come as these impending lawsuits continue to come down there is quite a bit but this is what you get Esau see he he played y'all he got what he wanted to get out of it and y'all gonna make him pay in the end because that's how you get down and ex-sheriff David Clark you choose to be in that arena and when you choose to be in a particular arena you also accept the side effects that's what you're going to feel the side effects you're going to be nothing more than a form of entertainment to the enemy so anyway my royal family render your voice with your beautiful divine words and as always my royal family I thank you for your love I thank you for your support and with that said Ashe. <laughs>